Hello, my name is Michael Frost. I'm the Innsbruck Southeast Region Vice President. And several weeks ago, uh, a dashboard, our COVID-19 dashboard in Rock Hill Schools, uh, we're located in Rock Hill, South Carolina, just south of Charlotte, North Carolina. Uh, our COVID-19 dashboard was shared in the INSPRA This Week newsletter and other publications that many of us as INSPRA members receive or, or are subscribed to. So um, there's also been discussion among the INSPRA Connect platform and other school PR groups uh, regarding how each of us is handling our effort within our communities to be trans both transparent, be informative, be accurate in our communication of COVID-19 cases among our students and our faculty and staff. The Rock Hill Schools dashboard, as I said, was shared. Uh, it created quite some conversation and uh, in order to help many of us, uh, I'm gonna put together this quick video to share some behind the scenes of our dashboard and hopefully encourage you to explore Google Data Studio the same way I did uh, prior to creating our dashboard. I have to first pause and say that uh, I am not an expert. Uh, I attended uh, at the Washington DC seminar, uh, which seems forever ago at this point, but uh, a year and a half ago, the INSPRA seminar that was held in Washington DC, I attended a breakout session uh, in which one of our uh, members shared about her use of using Data Studio to share social media statistics to her school board, uh, I believe it was, or at minimum, uh, provided a platform for her to measure and monitor data within her district and within her department. And so I felt at that time, there would come a time and a place where I would need to explore, need to jump in at a deeper level. And lo and behold, uh, the worldwide pandemic provided that opportunity for me. So I'm happy to be able to share today uh, a little bit with you of what I've learned and how it has been a great benefit within our school community and our community at large, as well as providing a, a real-time tool to our local media to have the latest information without needing to contact us for an interview or a phone call or or any other correspondence because we are putting it out there for them and for our public to see. Uh, so without any further ado, I'll just hop right in uh, and show you our, show you our dashboard. And so here we go. Our dashboard, which has been shared, as I said, yeah, here it is. Uh, so from here, uh, this is the end product, of course, uh, and it has evolved uh, over time. But uh, in a summary, uh, this provides a very high level look at different data points within our district. We provide uh, overall summary, and this is a cumulative summary here in the top left area. This is cumulative since our first day of school, which was September 8th. We then provide a cumulative summary in this table format by school. And again, this is cumulative since the first day of school. We provide information in the categories of student and staff isolation, student and staff quarantine, and student and staff who have tested positive. So we're tracking this at the school level, which then rolls up to the district-wide summary. And then across the bottom, we've provided this in a snapshot summary by elementary, middle, high, and high school levels, as well as our non-school sites. Uh, so our transportation center, our district office, et cetera, uh, would, would comprise the other district sites area. The top right is our newest element. Uh, now that we are into our third week of using this dashboard, we knew that it would need to evolve uh, and show more than just a overall cumulative. And so we are now showing a week at a glance. So this information in the green box uh, is illustrating our current new cases or new reported into issues this week. And so the numbers in the green area are a subset of what you see on the left. So just this week, uh, we have had 21 students placed in isolation, six in quarantine, and two students testing positive this week. 
to next week. That information will, again, it rolls into the area on the left. This will then zero out on Saturday and we'll start again uh, on Monday morning with information for next week. And so that's the snapshot of what we're looking at here. Uh, the area in the bottom right is the piece that is not tied to uh, data that we control, but our South Carolina Department of Health and Environmental Control, so our state health department, provides information on a two-week uh, rolling uh, scale. And so we're using this as yet another data point in how we choose to return to our full operation of school. And so this area is updated once a week uh, with two-week rolling data from our state health department. So uh, we're, we're anxious and we're hopeful that each of these areas turns green at some point. Uh, but right now we're in a medium, the yellow area, and then high and high. Uh, so that is, that is one piece of our data that we're using. And then certainly the rest of this table uh, information displayed shares at a greater detail information about our actual school communities and how we were, are using this to influence our decisions as we navigate this time together as a district with our members in our community of how and when we will return to a full five-day instruction. At current time, uh, we are offering a hybrid environment for our families. So where our families, perhaps like many of you, have had an option to choose to go 100% uh, virtual for the school year or perhaps for the semester. And then we've allowed others to attend in person and they're attending on an A, B, A or B day schedule. So they're alternating A's and B's uh, in the classroom. So all data on here, uh, I share that about the virtual students because all the data on this uh, dashboard is only reflective of our in-person students um, with the idea and belief that students in our virtual environment are not mixing with others in an in-person setting so there's no risk in the event they are infected uh, that there's no risk that they are going to interact with another student or another staff member uh, in the in-person setting so that's how we are di differentiating what we are actually sharing on this dashboard so from there i will uh, just kind of give you a peek at the data itself uh, many have reached out to me and asked, well, well, what's behind this? How does this work? If you're familiar with Excel or you're familiar with Google Sheets, uh, that is the basis for the dashboard. So here I am uh, sharing with you our overall summary table. So this area here uh, is the running total of everything since the first day of school. Uh, and then across the bottom, you'll see there's a series of tabs and each tab provides data to a different area of the dashboard. And again, as I said from the outset, I don't pretend to be an expert. I'm learning this along with you. Um, and, and so there's likely a better way to do this, a more efficient way to do this, or perhaps it can all be done from a single sheet within Google Sheets. But uh, this is how I've set it up. This is what's working for us. Uh, and so at the bottom, we have a tab called current week. So as you would suspect, information entered here is pushed over to our uh, week at a glance area. Then we see the summary tables here. And this is all created through uh, using formulas to reference that original, the home sheet, the home uh, spreadsheet. So this is the elementary totals, middle school totals, high school totals, our district sites totals, and we have the summaries. So this is just the full summary. And then we have the summaries uh, by percentage of our overall population, our student population and staff population. And so and then we have here, just as a reference for the formulas to work, this is our current student in-person population and then our total staff, uh, faculty and staff number 2461. Our in-person population is 10,068. Uh, our district as a whole has about 17,000 students. Uh, so you can see we're at about a 60-40 split with our students in person versus virtual. So that is the quick um, kind of behind the scenes of how, it works, how the data is managed within a spreadsheet compared to how it's presented within the dashboard framework itself. So within, with this step here, 
is it was it's nothing more than creating a spreadsheet and labeling your spreadsheet and creating the table the way you want it to appear and then I'll show you momentarily how we then connect it to uh, an element within the Google Studio State, excuse me, the Google Data Studio. So within Data Studio, um, this is what uh, it looks like on the Data Studio side of things. So still it does look like uh, the public version. Um, we can see that we have the ability to uh, click on particular areas. So I've double clicked on the summary area. We'll see the different types of uh, charts and tables that we can create over here. Uh, we have to assign a data source. Uh, I'm going to start from scratch here in a second, but I just wanted to kind of show you how this kind of functions uh, before I do that. Um, and then we would, we would assign a data source. We could then use the metric area. So that's what elements of the selected data source do we want to present to the public through this uh, particular element? And then down here again, uh, in the summary by school, uh, you can see that we have uh, quite a bit that we're wanting to show. Uh, so we have each of the areas uh, that are available in the selected data source, we've got them present in what we're showing. Now, you could see on our uh, previously when I had the actual spreadsheet up that it was, uh, it's about 32 rows, I believe it is, because we have that many facilities. But here in the dashboard, I'm not showing the entire thing at one time. Uh, and that allows us to pack more into a smaller space so the dashboard can, can make better use of the real estate available. Uh, you can make multiple page dashboards, but uh, for this purpose, uh, I felt it was important to keep everything on, on one screen uh, so that folks did not have to navigate beyond what we're, what we're presenting to them here. So right now, we, we can make this box bigger or smaller. You see as I click and drag it around. Uh, so that's uh, how that would work. So I could make it bigger, but of course, then it's going to overlap these elements at the bottom. So I'm going to put it back. Back where it was. There's ability to just have text. Uh, so if you want to have description text or um, identifying text to describe what your what your end user is to be looking at or what they're to gain from this or what story you're trying to communicate through the data presented, uh, you're able to add a text element and just type text. Uh, you can see as well that the entire dashboard is able to be branded through your own color scheme and adding logos and, and whatnot uh, to, to the platform. So there's the, the oh, again, just staying pretty high level here. Um, I did do uh, some research and uh, I've taught myself a good bit through just uh, YouTube videos and then the tutorials available from Data Studio itself uh, to get comfortable in navigating the platform and and allowing my creativity and, and uh, thoughts to, to expand and consider how could we continue to tinker this. Uh, for instance, would we want to show trends over time with a line graph or some other type of pie chart or some other type of statistical analysis uh, that is built in for you? But for what it's worth now, I have elements that are called scorecard. So there's the scorecard at the top for students. There's the scorecard here for, for staff. Uh, and then there's another element scorecard and scorecard for the two areas with the, the calculate the percentages. Uh, and then again, scorecard for the week at a glance for both students and staff. And then this is nothing more than a table. Uh, it looks like a table because it is a table. And then across the bottom, the totals by different areas are also tables. So there's not much variety here, uh, and that's okay. I mean, as I said, I'm not an expert, so this isn't going to have all the bells and whistles and flashy elements that you might see in some of the pre-designed templates that you can use as a starting space uh, within Data Studio. Uh, so this is this is where we've started. This is what we have. Uh, evolved with over the last uh, few weeks 
and we'll continue as I learn more, we'll continue to make adjustments and, and change different elements on here. Um, but like you, um, I am optimistic that, um, hopefully like you, I'm optimistic that COVID is, is uh, drawing to a close across our country uh, and that we can restore normalcy at some point. It's been so long uh, that we maybe have forgotten what it is like to be normal, uh, especially in our school setting, but we are desperate for that. Um, so this dashboard provides a, a peek into uh, and a peek behind the curtain for how our leadership here in Rockville Schools is using data to then guide our internal decision-making and conversations that we will then use at some point uh, to make the decision to return in person for all students uh, that wish to be uh, in person. So I'm now just going to kind of go over to a very the starting spot. So if you don't have a Data Studio account, it's free. Uh, it's datastudio.google.com. Uh, and so after you go there, uh, you have this is your, your starting space. So as I indicated, there's some very complex uh, reports that you can use as, as starting points or, or for, for inspiration as a, uh, of how it can be used. Uh, and you can see that you know, this has elements where you can drop down and do different date ranges. That's an element that I'm very uh, curious to figure out uh, as we continue through this process. Uh, if this was the template you wanted to use, there's a button in the top right that says use template. And then you need to go through and connect your data sources. So your, uh, whether it's a, a Google Sheet or, or some other web-based resource, you have to connect it so that it's using your data, obviously, and not the sample uh, that's provided. Uh, one area that we're going to try to explore uh, in our district is using this to create social media dashboards. Uh, so this is an example here of YouTube views and statistics and analytics from your uh, particular example here of a YouTube channel. So in Rock Hill, we've, we've doubled down on our strategy to use YouTube as uh, a video source beyond uh, what it had been used for the last couple of years. We had treated as more of an archive and storage space and pumped more resource and energy into Facebook for video distribution. Uh, in this summer, we had a change of heart, change of strategy, if you will. Um, and so we want to be able to measure. So this type of dashboard here uh, could allow us to quickly and easily measure differently than the available analytics inside of YouTube itself. So that's just a thought for beyond COVID, how this can, can work. Um, but uh, what we did here when we started is we clicked the plus sign and said blank report. So just like a publication, uh, just like uh, those of us I know, I'll speak to myself and many others that, that do a lot of work within Canva, uh, you start with a blank slate or you start with a template. And so from here, uh, it, it's basically saying, where do you want your data to come from? Uh, so you can see there's quite a bit of uh, sources that are Google-based sources you can pull from. And then there's 272 additional platforms that you can connect to Data Studio. So I will stop there because I don't want to blow your mind with all that because that's, that's just overwhelming. So I'll stay here in the, the realm of Google Sheets. So I'll click Google Sheets. Um, I'm already connected to my Google account. So I could just say, all right, I'm going to use on my Google dashboard. So there we go. Um, I'm picking my dashboard here and that, that uh, sorry, that works workbook or that worksheet has uh, multiple sheets in it. So then I want to use the home sheet. So I've now selected that and now I'm going to say add that source. So I click the add button. Um, yes, it's just wanting me to confirm that I'm adding that source. So there it is. Um, there's at the very bare bones basic. There it is. So as I said or showed earlier, you can resize elements. Um, if we want to add additional dimensions to it, that's what it's called, so different columns. Um, I'd say I want to add the staff isolation number to it. Uh, I'm going to add these different dimensions to it. I'll just keep going right on down. Uh, you may want to reorganize the, the rows. Uh, 
pollen, so you can click and drag these things around. I want the spool to be the top. So you can see kind of there how it works. Um, and if you wanted to add it uh, text, there's a pool at the top with the text. So just click and draw a text box. Add, you know, add text here. And within that, you can then format the text. Um, so I've got the text box selected, and then you can format uh, the size of the text, the fonts. You don't have everything in the world to pick from, but you've got quite a bit uh, to pick from. So you can pick the font, you can then change the color of the font. Uh, of course, there's ready the range, the color is readily available, or you can add a custom color uh, using your, your color hex codes. So let's just say, let's just cancel and pick a ready-made color. So let's pick blue. Uh, so now that we have some blue font. Uh, if you wanted that to be a hyperlink to something, you could, uh, just like any other formatting tools I'm sure you're very familiar with, um, you could highlight the text uh, and click the hyperlink and, and add whatever uh, you need to there. Uh, if you needed to, as I said, you want to decorate this up a little bit, um, you can add different shapes. So just looking at kind of like what we did online. So here we have a color code header. Again, let's make this, uh, let's make that blue. So I may also now want to put my logo on here. Now uh, there's a tool here, it's a vintage. So if you have an, a URL that you're going to reference for this picture, or you're just going to upload it from your computer. So we'll pick, we're going to upload it. Uh, it's going to then bring it in. So, Resize it, just click and drag, it's keeping everything scaled appropriately, which is, uh, which is nice. So you keep the integrity of all the shapes and sizes of everything. Uh, and that's it. Uh, we can certainly keep going and dem demonstrate more, but if you wanted to add a second table, uh, you would just click the area here that says add data uh, or add a chart. So if we click to add a chart, we can see all the variety of Charts, tables, pivot tables, scattered plots, all the an analytical pieces that, that you may find a use for. Uh, maybe not with COVID, but with other areas uh, of your reporting and metrics that you may need to, to use for internal or external reporting within your school district and certainly your communications measurements uh, that you report to your superintendent, to your school board, uh, to others in the district. This, this tool, I do strongly believe, is something that uh, is worth investing time and energy in uh, to figure out how you can leverage it for you and for your uh, community. Uh, so here's the dashboard that we just kind of made here, click on the fly. And if we want to then see what it looks like uh, publicly, we can click the view button and there's what it would look like to the, to the public. And then from here, you have options to share, just like you do in other areas of Google, uh, for those of you that are familiar there. So this menu bar at the top is, is a familiar space. But we can share uh, through an inv invitation uh, and share the file with them, or we can download it. We can get the report link itself. Uh, you also have the ability to get the embed code uh, for the app. Uh, for the dashboard, I'm sorry, that we created. Uh, so uh, for that, uh, we took the embed code and we have placed it here on our website so that it's a part of our site and not just a standalone piece by itself. So every afternoon, myself and our director of nursing services have a standing meeting uh, as well. Uh, in my absence, my assistant here in Sheffield uh, steps in and the two of them would meet and update the data in that main spreadsheet. And it instantly updates here in real time for our community, for our staff, for our students, for our local media to see without calling, without digging uh, to find it. Uh, we're not hiding anything. We are showing students and staff that are in isolation. Um, we're showing students and staff that have been quarantined. And then we're also showing students and staff who have attested have a positive COVID-19 test. So we're showing a lot in a small screen uh, or a small area. And again, encourage you to consider this. And as I wrap up, I wanted to share two examples of uh, some friends of mine um, that are, 
have uh, taken a little different approach, but are also providing a dashboard uh, to their community. Uh, one of those is a friend of mine here in South Carolina. His name is John Eby. He is at the school district of Pickens County, which is the home to the national champion Clemson Tigers. Um, and there's importance to why I reference that uh, because of the next one I will show you is from uh, someone else. Um, and I'll leave it there. But uh, in this case, John and his staff at his district are using a Google document. So the same idea, uh, they're just updating a table that's within a Google document and at, and at the uh, interval that they have committed to update, uh, they'll update this. And because it's a Google doc and it's shared publicly, the information is up to date in real time. Uh, and the last example, so I mentioned the Clemson Tigers. And so here's the home of the Alabama Crimson Tide who lost uh, in the 2018 National Championship game to the Clemson Tigers. So this is the dashboard developed by our incoming uh, our president elect uh, for INSPRA, Leslie Bruinton of the Tuscaloosa City Schools in Alabama. So you can see how she has taken a similar approach, uh, distilled the information a little differently, but this is also created within Data Studio and then embedded within their district's website. So again, um, this has not been, uh, I don't think, uh, a very comprehensive you know, nuts and bolts and how to really do it, but it hopefully creates a conversation within your district. And, and again, not only how you could use a dashboard to share information with uh, your community about COVID, but other areas um, to, to hold yourself accountable and then to be more transparent with your uh, stakeholders. So there again, there's uh, our dashboard here in Rock Hill Schools in Rock Hill, South Carolina. Uh, it was my pleasure to share this with you today. Uh, I encourage you, if you have questions, you're invited to, to email me. Uh, my email address is mfrost, that's M-F-R-O-S-T, at rhmail.org. Uh, it's available also in the INSPRA online directory, which I encourage you to visit the INSPRA website, inspra.org. Uh, log in and check the member directory and continue to connect with your colleagues around the country. And, and I just remind us all at this important time in our history that this is a, a time that we lean on one another more than we ever have, that we are in this together, and that we share our resources with one another uh, to be more complete in our communications and more accurate in our communications because there's no sense at this time of reinventing the wheel. Uh, one of the strengths of this organization is the, uh, is the relationships that we form with uh, friends and colleagues around the country and share our experiences to improve the outcomes in each of our communities. So again, thank you uh, for, for watching this. I hope it helps. Uh, feel free to reach out and I'll help as best I can. Uh, by phone, by email in the days ahead.